So let's let's jump into the cell um, figuratively. <laughs> so you have spoken about our our fingerprints in our design, right? Um, and like I said, I, I I think irreducible complexity of the cell, but of of systems in general, um, is not just provocative, but I, I to me it's a defeater. Um, can you speak about specifically optimization and ingenuity? I remember hearing you talk about those things as um, you know parts or functions and embedded within the cell, because because what I think is important is a lot of times I'll hear. Um, you know, I don't even want to quote Dawkins, but atheistic scientists who they, they'll talk about everything from here on, but you can't explain this. You can't explain the origin and yeah. not just can't explain it, especially as I, as I hear you and others and James Stewart and others talk about the way the amino acids have to combine. Like if you take the universe, the likelihood of just making one protein molecule is so ridiculously vast that to assume that life of any kind, let alone complex life such as ours would come or could come, seems to take, to take a lot more faith than to believe a God did it. What, do, what can you tell us about the optimization and, and ingenuity that you see within smaller systems and functions that speaks to design? Yeah, well, you know, uh, you know one of the, the features of systems that are the, the work of a mind is that they display optimization. And when we look at, you know, biochemical systems, these are incredibly optimized systems, optimized to a degree that uh, is, is increasingly uh, astounding, I think, to even biochemists. Uh, so, for example, um, the genetic code, um, which is really the heart of biochemistry, it's a set of rules that actually define the information that you're, you see in proteins and in DNA. That, that, that the way that information is ultimately defined is in effect the, the genetic code. And that code is exquisitely optimized for a number of different uh, factors, so much to that, that it's very difficult to envision how the, the, the genetic code that is universal to all life could have ever come into being. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the optimization is, is extreme. Uh, and so uh, people have done a lot of studies where they've compared different features of the genetic code to random codes that they could generate uh, that could have conceivably been chosen by evolution. And none of those codes perform as well as this, the, the genetic code in nature when we consider all the different attributes of the code that are, that are optimized. But there are... And uh, they, they designed it, right? That's a mind doing it. That's the other part. <laughs> right, right. Well, and, and there, there's about, you know, I don't know, 10 to the, to the 80 possible genetic codes uh, that could exist. And the code that we see in, in, in nature, again, appears to be unique. But if we just assume that the universe is 10 billion years old and that there's a tr there were a trillion organisms for 10 billion years searching code space, uh, trying to find the code that we see in nature, uh, you would take, I think, about you'd have to search through 10 to the 38 codes per second in order to find the, the code in nature. And they're just not enough resources or time available to hit upon the, the code that we see in nature that appears to be so exquisitely optimized. And so, you know, to me, that is probably the most extreme example. But even like the, the set of amino acids that are used to build proteins, you know, is again, exquisitely optimized c compared to any other set of amino acids that could be conceivable, none of them have the properties that we see uh, for the set of amino acids that are used to build proteins. So that optimization is extreme and biochemists are continually, continually discovering new features of the cell that are optimized and optimized to uh, such an extreme that it really suggests a mind. Mm. Suggests it to me too. <laughs>